Who would win in a fight between Ken Masters from Street Fighter and Terry Bogard from SNK Fighting Games? I'm Ink and this is Smash Bracket, the show where we put every character from Super Smash Bros. into a giant animated tournament to figure out who's canonically the most powerful. Let's get into it. Ken Masters was the son of incredibly rich hotel tycoons living out of San Francisco, California. His parents were so loaded that it took 20 minutes just to drive from the front yard to the main house, and as a result of this life of luxury, Ken slowly became a living Darman villain, becoming entitled, conceited, and caring more about having a good time than anything else. He had a general lack of respect for anyone around him and lived a life free of discipline. However, one morning Ken's father woke up and realized, holy crap, I have a selfish brat for a son, and it's time to step up my parenting and teach him that you can't just use money to solve all of your problems, which he did by sending Ken away to train with an old martial arts master named Gokin to learn discipline and respect in a temple far, far away in the Japanese wilderness. So, I guess do as he says, Ken, not as he does. When Ken first arrived at the temple, he was incredibly resistant to change and was skeptical of his new master. But after years of intense training, Ken slowly started to gain a respect for his master and see a new side to life. This was in no small part due to a fellow student at the dojo named Ryu. Ryu was the embodiment of everything that Ken Masters wasn't. While Ken tended to be hot-headed, optimistic, and chatty, Ryu was stoic and serious. Ryu focused on perfecting the fundamentals, whereas Ken took the fundamentals and added his own unorthodox, fiery spin to them. And even though Ken started as a conceited hothead, nothing quite humbles somebody like getting beat up time and time again, which is a lesson that Ryu made sure to teach his new friend. And through their time learning martial arts, Ryu served as something that Ken never really had in his entire life, a challenge. But more than that, he became something else that Ken never had, a brother. Ken was inspired by Ryu and strove to become an even better fighter than him. And as the two students trained under Gokin, they learned a variety of powerful fighting techniques to get the edge up on each other. One of the boys would learn how to shoot powerful Hadoukens from their fists, and then the other would learn that and how to launch themselves through the air like a spinning top while kicking. This rivalry and daily training continued for 11 years, but after over a decade of trying to best each other, Ken and Ryu always ended up neck and neck in their skill and abilities. In fact, these two are so close in power that later on in their lives they were scanned by a machine that showed their power as being statistically identical. And not only was their power a perfect match, but their skill level was also so close that it wasn't uncommon for them to fight an entire afternoon with neither coming out the clear victor. No matter how powerful Ryu became, Ken was always right there to give him a run for his money and be an invaluable training partner. And this period of training in their lives really shaped the two fighters into entirely different men than they once were. Ken taught Ryu how to lighten up every now and then, and he kept him on his toes with his wild and unorthodox fighting style, whereas Ryu taught Ken the importance of respect, discipline, and fundamentals. Eventually though, like all good things, their training came to an end and the two went their separate ways to compete in various martial arts tournaments. Ken went back to America and entered several national tournaments, easily sweeping through the brackets and defeating the champion Zangief to claim the title as martial arts champion of the United States. Which was no simple task. Zangief is strong enough that he's been able to suplex somebody out of orbit, and he's bragged that he can crush man's head like Spiroig between thighs. But Ken was able to take these attacks from him and take him out with very little issue. Long gone was the spoiled rich kid who lived life with a silver spoon in his mouth. Instead, through hard work and determination, Ken lived a life of honor and discipline. This new outlook on life was obvious to everybody who met him, and it even led him to meeting and marrying his wife, Eliza. While Ryu kept his life focused on martial arts exclusively, Ken decided to live a more balanced life. He settled down with Eliza, and together they had a son named Mel. Ken's parents also placed him in charge of running the family business. For the first time in his life, Ken truly had something to focus on besides just fighting. And for the first time in his life, he truly had meaning. But while you might be able to take the man out of the martial arts championships, you can never take the martial arts champion out of the man. Even through his married life, Ken continued to compete in tournaments and went on several different adventures with his old friend Ryu. Together, these two have taken out evil dictators, traveled to different dimensions, and even fought their way through hell, decapitating zombies and still making it home in time for dinner. There was also that time in the Street Fighter EX series where Ken and Ryu were dealing with dudes strong enough to punch them into Jupiter, but they just kept on fighting. And this fighting was more than just a pastime for Ken. It was a way of life. It led him to new friends and new family that he otherwise never would have met. His journeys also led him to finding new rivals to push him even further in his abilities, such as Terry Bogard, the fierce fighter of Southtown. When Ken heard about a blonde fighter in red who could kick some serious butt, he traveled and joined a tournament just for the chance to face off against him. 
And while we never got a clear canonical winner between the two, we did get some really great moments, like Ken returning Terry's hat to him, or Terry saying that they shared a similar smell. Huh. But I don't just bring this up for the sake of today's battle. I think that Ken's eagerness to seek out new friends and new rivals wherever he can find them to push himself even further is indicative of what makes him such a formidable fighter. Ken is somebody who would have had every reason to live an easy and charmed life, gliding by on the success of his parents. But that isn't what he did. Ken is the kind of guy to run into fire just to see if it will make him stronger, all while keeping a smile on his face and a positive attitude. And he brings this attitude with him wherever he goes. When Ryu was struggling with evil impulses and most people were too weak or too afraid to confront him, Ken was the one to jump in and help bring them back from the brink. Ken Masters is undoubtedly one of the best fighters to ever live, but when it comes down to it, he's so much more than that at the same time. Ken is a testament that no matter where you start from, there's always a way to improve yourself and seek true fulfillment. While he had a rough start, by letting friends and family in, Ken allowed his pride to be broken down and he found something truly worth fighting for. He's seen some seriously dark things in his life, like again, hell. But in the face of all of it, he maintains his fiery passion and sense of optimism, always being there to face impossible odds and prove that he truly is the master of his own destiny. Now let's see how he stacks up against his opponent for today, Terry Bogard. And to do that, I'm going to bring in a longtime friend and fellow content creator, Blastbox, to present the character. I'm incredibly excited to work with him, and his info will be in the description. Also, thank you, Blastbox, for saving me from this while I have a cold. I don't know if you can tell in my voice. But without further ado, let's check out Terry Bogard. One fateful day on the abrasive streets of Southtown, accomplished martial arts master Jeff Bogard is brutally killed by former fellow martial arts student Geese Howard, who was jealous that their master chose Jeff to learn the secret techniques of their art instead of him. Unfortunately for Geese, Jeff's murder was witnessed by his recently adopted sons, including the one who would grow up to become known as the Hungry Wolf of Southtown, Terry Bogard. No problem! Terry vowed to avenge his father, along with his brother Andy, and the two agreed to take 10 years to hone their martial arts skills before challenging Geese. While Andy left to train in Japan, Terry stayed behind in America to train in the only place he had called home before being adopted, the streets. Knowing he had a long way to go before he could challenge Geese, Terry took advantage of every opportunity he could find to become a better fighter. From mastering the skills passed down to him by his father, training under his father's mentor, and his time just wandering the country, Terry became skilled in a variety of fighting styles, including boxing, karate, kung fu, kickboxing, and good old fashioned street fighting. A strong start to be sure, but nothing that'll fill out the special move list in a fighting game. For that, we look at perhaps the most devastating skill Terry acquired on his journey. After seeking out Tung Fu Ru, the man who trained both Terry's father and Geese, Terry was taught the ancient art of Hakyoku Seiken, the Holy Fist of Eight Ways, a fighting style that allows the user to manipulate the Earth's chi. Once Terry had learned the ways of the Holy Fist, he incorporated it into his other fighting styles, giving him access to devastating energy-based abilities like the Grounded Projectile Power Wave, a devastating lunging punch burn knuckle, the speedy axe kick crack shoot, and whatever rising tackle is. And that's just the starting line. Terry could push these abilities even further to unleash his super special moves, like punching the ground to invoke the explosive Power Geyser and his iconic Buster Wolf. All of these skills and abilities turn Terry into an exceptional fighter. Terry has proven to be powerful enough to blow up an entire concrete roof. An explosion that Terry survived like it was nothing, by the way. So, after his 10 years of intensive training, Terry returned to Southtown so that he could enter the King of Fighters, Geese Howard's own yearly martial arts tournament in which he seeks out the best fighters the world has to offer. Here, Terry knew he would finally have his chance to avenge his father. He successfully fought through the entire tournament, including defeating the previous champion who was Geese's right-hand man, earning Terry the right to battle Geese himself. Terry was able to best him in their battle, kicking him off his own tower, avenging his father, and presumably killing Geese Howard. And then Geese's half-brother, like a year after that. Then Geese again after that, of course he wasn't actually dead. And then Geese again, again, for the final time, actually killing him. Probably, at least as far as we know. 
To his credit, Terry at least tried to save him that time, which is a genuine testament to his character. Despite all of these ruthless, or sometimes even vengeful battles, the years of rigorous training, or his incredibly harsh childhood, it never once weathered Terry's kind heart actually becoming friends with many of the fighters he met on his journey, and even choosing to dedicate time to a romantic relationship with fellow Fatal Fury fighter Blue Mary. Even at the end, after defeating his rival for the final time, Terry decided to adopt Geese's son, Rock Howard. Not to spite his old enemy, but to find meaningful and satisfactory resolution to their feud for both himself and for another kid who lost his father as a result of this vicious rivalry. All of that just coming from the genuinely warm and heartfelt guy Terry is past all the punching and power waving and hilariously translated win quotes. And all of that is just his story from the Fatal Fury series. Many of Terry's most impressive feats come from the alternate universe story taking place in SNK's flagship series, the crossover fighting game, The King of Fighters. Yep, yeah, named after Geese's tournament that Terry entered. Despite not being the protagonist of this story, Terry still racked up a serious list of feats, including surviving multiple explosions powerful enough to demolish buildings, and being able to survive blows from many of KOF's strongest fighters, like Chang, who was strong enough to knock his opponent across the entire world. And it's not all just taking the punches, Terry also impresses on the offense. He can destroy concrete pillars with a single kick, detonate large sections of a forest with a single punch to the ground, and he's even capable of damaging multiple cast members who are strong enough to survive a blast from the city-busting Zero Cannon. And Terry's not done yet. All that power does not come at the cost of speed. Most impressively, Terry was able to dodge an incoming bullet point-blank without so much as a flinch. Don't let the laid-back persona fool you. Terry is a fighting force to be reckoned with keeping up with many of the strongest fighters seen in his universes. Like that time where he beat the... <laughs> the actual god of war, Mars. Okay, since when did Terry pull off so much crazy stuff in the animations? I've only played Terry's game where his most impressive feat is like winning an arcade arm wrestling game. All right, Smash Bracket Team kinda opening my eyes here a little bit. This dramatic enough for you? Hey. In the end, that exceptional combat prowess is only half of what makes Terry such a special combatant in the world of fighting games. Unlike many of the fighters from his game or others, Terry takes a genuine joy from the experience of fighting. Terry is just always happy to show up to the next bout, whether he's just helping out a friend or facing down a god. Like the player shoving quarters into his arcade cabinet, Terry's just happy to be there. Be there to fight, be there at the local bar with friends, be there training his son to fight just like his father taught him. It's such a rare and special mix for a fighting game protagonist to be an unrelenting powerhouse in battle, but also just a great, wholesome, all-American dad, someone I just want to be my friend. I mean, his favorite hobby is gaming, and he has a pet monkey named Yuki. Tell me you don't want to go play video games with Terry Rock and Yuki right now. You can't do it. Heck, my segment's wrapping up anyway, I might go do that right now. That is Terry Bogard, the legendary wolf from Southtown. Thank you so much to the Smash Bracket team for letting me come on here and tell you all about my boy. I do appreciate it. Here's to a good clean fight between two of my favorite blondes in fighting games, Live and Let Die. Ink, the floor is yours. Thanks for that, Blastbox. As I said, Blast is a longtime YouTube friend of mine and makes excellent content. Please consider checking this stuff out below. But with that said, it's time for our fight. If you want to help support the series and enable us to finish this project to the end, please consider checking us out on Patreon or YouTube membership. We've got early works in progress, music, artwork, and other behind the scenes content that I share from time to time. Even just a few dollars per month is a huge help. But with that out of the way, let's find out who will advance on to the next round of the Smash Bracket and who will be disqualified. And to even stand a chance. We both knew we had to get stronger. We've been traveling together ever since then. I can feel him beginning to push my limits. I see. That sounds pretty intense. But if it means keeping Eliza and Mel safe, we've really got no choice. That said, if we want to win, we're going to need backup. And I think I know just the guy. Whoopsie! I 
didn't mean to strike the wrong chord with you. I'm not loving rolling to your rock. So let's boogie! <laughs> Ooh, tempting offer, handsome. But unfortunately, it's time to play your outro. <laughs> Oh, what a weak little whelp you turned out to be. Maybe next time, don't play it Sorry, by- Sorry, you ah! can't! Huh. Hey, pal. Miss me? Kin Masters, you big silly. How you been? Yeah, well, you know how it goes. I was in your neck of the woods and in the mood to uppercut a grungy witch. Figured now was as good of a time as any to show you how strong I've gotten. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, alrighty. I'm in the mood for an easy win. Huh. Perfect. Bring it on, pretty boy. Time for an encore. Oh, shit. That was supposed to be a music blast. Magic is so freaky! Uh, it's not so bad. This seems like a pretty good place to train. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah! Go. Time to park! I'm ready for you. Eat this! Similar smell. I just came from training. Ninjas! Join the foot. Won't be destroyed! Uh, hey Terry, I think we've got company. Oh, you think? If you them, two of us. Poor little guys. Ten bucks says I can take down more ninjas than you. Deal? You are! I I look good! Eh, I'm more of a Marvel guy. Begin. Take this! Hey, come on, come on! Now you okay? Never better, pal! Oh! This is giving me a headache. You could always just give up. <laughs> Fat chance. Oh, yeah. Too easy. Oh, giving up already? Against a weenie like you? Never! Fuckies and Pookas!
Okay, let's get serious. Uh, uh, let's end this. Whoa, I need to And there you go! This was an incredibly fun match, but it wasn't exactly a close match. While both fighters have dedicated themselves to the art of fighting, Terry is just cut from a different cloth. This bullet dodge is way faster than anything that Ken's been able to perform, and Terry is able to hit hard enough to hurt fighters capable of taking zero damage from the Zero Cannon which was devastating enough to obliterate an entire city. While Ken has been able to fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best fighters in his universe, Terry's been able to hold his own and outmatch the literal god of war. And that's not even the only god that Terry's fought to a standstill. King of Fighters gets weird sometimes. So Terry's not only likely the faster of the two and the more skilled fighter, but when you look at their best strength and durability feats, it really just puts the nail in the coffin of any chance that Ken had. If we assume that Ken was able to hit just as hard as Ryu in his base form, Ken would need to hit Terry over 186,000 times at his maximum power in order to take the victory, whereas Terry would only need to hit Ken about 15 times. There is just almost zero chance that Ken would be able to ever take this match. Heck, Terry even does better dad jokes than Ken. Terry Bogard is the winner and will be moving on to the next round of the Smash Bracket. Next time on the Smash Bracket. Versus... <laughs> <laughs> Link!